Hi everyone and welcome back to Exploration Gaming. I'm Marco and today I'm going to show you how to beat the NPCs at Tales of Tribute. First, and let me be clear about this, I've stopped playing the card game against other players. People are too unpredictable. They take too long to decide on a move and Tot is primarily a game of chance. The minigame that Zoss put out is a huge time suck and for a paltry return. So frankly, I've got better, more profitable and fun things to do in ESO. Also, I don't give a crap about the sweaty boy leaderboards. I pity those that are too deeply invested in such trivial things. Hey guys, it's time to Nefes and chill in. I do, however, like a good furnishing plan, a new tapestry or the occasional transmute crystal. So the solution is whipping the non-players, who are all about as sharp as a bag of wet hair. Our little Tamriel NPCs suffer from what can only be deemed as very sloppy coding in a card game that is both unbalanced and ill-conceived from a strategy point of view. What I'm going to show you is not a cheat. This gameplay will not work against other players with a functioning brain. I've just been paying attention, watching the patterns, and learning through experience what the NPCs will, and more importantly, will not do. It's similar to knowing how a world boss will react in combat because you've seen it dozens of times. Everyone knows the final boss at any dolmen will appear next to the stairs. It's baked into their tiny robotic programs. It's the same with the card game, but Tot takes Dumb to a whole new level. For starters, there are only slight variations between novice, proficient, and expert NPC card players, and I use the term expert with my tongue lodged firmly in my cheek. I only play experts, and here's your first bit of news. Every NPC expert will play exactly like every other NPC expert. Exactly. The designers only wrote one program with zero variations. You may have to travel to a dozen different taverns, and the NPCs might each have a different, badly spelled name, but they're all going to make the same bonehead moves. I could go into what an NPC will do in every scenario, but you don't need that to win. And if you keep playing, you'll notice the patterns on your own. I am, however, going to give you a nearly foolproof strategy for victory, and it centers around one key patron deck, Rajin the purring liar. For three gold coins you can choose this patron and he'll place a bewilderment card into your opponent's deck. The bewilderment card has no value. Now throwing these at an opponent will often break up any possible combos in the making and combos are what win this silly little game. When playing an NPC you want to throw bewilderment cards at them whenever it's feasible especially near the start of the game. Obviously though You'll want to snag any good cards, which is to say, cards that grant power and prestige. Now here is why this strategy works. The NPCs will never, and I mean never, ever, choose this patron and throw a bewilderment card back at you. Now you try this with a real live person, and before you know it, you're throwing bewilderment cards at each other purely out of spite. But apparently the designers went out for pizza and beer the day they were supposed to program the algorithm for the NPCs and the purring liar deck. Listen, when we're talking about sloppy coding, well, let's just say that well runs deep in Bethesda, Maryland. Now maybe Zoss will get wind of this video and decide to do some reprogramming in the card game. Yeah, right. And maybe Zoss will send me the 400 profit Inferno staves and greatswords that they owe me for never changing the placeholder graphic in the game. I'm not holding my breath. Tales of Tribute arrived on our doorstep, ugly and stupid, like the blind date from hell. And all we can do is shrug our shoulders and move on. And by the way, if the NPC chooses the Sorcerer King Orgnum deck, they'll have a very slight chance of winning, purely based on RNG. The Sorcerer King deck is completely overpowered and ruins what sliver of strategy was present in the design of this game. Players simply go back and forth picking this patron until someone wins. If Sauce had been smart, players would only be able to choose that deck if it was neutral or non-favored like the Crow deck. Anyway, 
The NPCs are programmed to blindly choose this patron and build up a lead, so beware of the Sorcerer King deck. As I've often said, ESO has more bugs than an ant farm, but the queen of the colony lives in the tales of tribute. Hold your nose and keep throwing bewilderment cards at the expert NPCs, then open your rewards and enjoy that sack of 40 gold pieces. I hope you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching. Come by my stream anytime if you want a demonstration of this gameplay, or you just want to hang out in the game. As always, I'm Marco. Try to have some fun in the game. Be kind to real people. And keep exploring.